Yo, Elliot, I am struggling. I believe I have no goals or objectives in my life. I'm having difficulties listening to myself and finding my life goals. Any suggestions? I tried writing my soul, uh, but what else can I do? I believe maybe it's because of my own limitations I place on myself. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I think it's interesting that your own self-assessment uh, states that you put limitations on yourself. And I see this happen with a, guy, a lot of guys a lot of time where all the opportunities are presented to them. Not only the opportunities, but the path that they should follow is presented. It's very clear from the outside looking in, right? A lot of times it's easier for an observer to see what a person should do rather than the person themselves. And I think that's part of the reason why people like hearing my opinion on things, because I'm just giving you my observation based on where you are. But when you're swimming into the damn thing, it's a lot harder, right? So uh, you say that you place limitations on yourself. And I, my question to you, or for you to ponder is this. How many times have you turned down opportunities? How many times have you said, no, I can't do that? Or you saw what you should do, but you stopped yourself from doing it. You're claiming that you have, you put, you place limitations on yourself. And so that's like somebody who's trying to drive by putting one foot on the gas and one foot on the brakes. It's like you're trying to go, but you're stopping yourself. And you got your foot on the brakes. You're just spinning your wheels. And you're not going, you're, you're not even spinning your wheels. You're revving your engine, but you're not going anywhere. You know what that does too? It's a compound effect. Now you get tired, right? And when you're tired, you know what you can't do? You can't think, you can't look, you can't see, you can't observe, you can't make decisions. You can't be decisive for yourself when you are tired all the time. And you're making yourself tired because that's what resistance does. Whenever we're in resistance of anything, we get tired. Notice. Notice that you're going to lack energy over time because just like putting that foot on the brake and on the gas at the same time, you're, 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 you're revving the engine and getting nowhere, which burns it out. Eventually you burn yourself out. Right? So what about these limitations that you place on yourself? The very first thing that you've done that's real good is that you recognize that you do this. You are doing it to yourself. You're doing it to yourself, right? You can't blame anybody or anything. You get in your own way. The next thing I would do is begin to observe when you get in your way and what you say to yourself to get in the way, right? What happens? Do you notice that there's a path, there's a door that's open for you? There's an opportunity available to you, but then you make excuses, right? Or you get scared or you self-sabotage? What is the mechanism by which you limit yourself? How are you creating that resistance for yourself in your life? You gotta observe yourself that way. You're self-observant enough to notice that you put limitations on yourself, but in what way? Be an observer of the mechanism by which you place limitations on yourself. Is it this, uh, is it this idea of I'm not good enough, imposter syndrome? What is it? I need you to isolate the demon. I need you to isolate the resistance. I need you to notice what you're doing because as you've said, you're doing it to yourself. So more than anything, my, my advice to you is to get to start knowing yourself by observing yourself so that you can stop yourself from doing what you're doing to cause you to have these, these difficulties, right? You say I'm having difficulty listening to myself and finding my life goal. That's because you're creating too much noise with your judgment. You're creating too much noise with your, sometimes you don't even need an opinion. This is a strange thing. I'm going to say it. Sometimes we need to stop thinking. I think sometimes we think too much. Sometimes we, we, we ruminate and we try to try to think over how things should be before we take action. And what I'm telling you sometimes you got to do is just take action without thinking. Sometimes that's the best route. It's not always the best route, but sometimes the best route is, okay, that door opens. Think about an athlete, right? Think about, think about a, a running back who received the ball, right? The quarterback just handed him the ball. And now he's got to look at the line. And he's got to find that gap so they can get through the, get through the gap and, and make a big run. But let's say he gets, he gets that ball and then he stops and starts thinking, okay, well, you know, I got to look for a gap now. And the gap's got to be a certain size. It should be a certain amount of inches. 
And I want to make sure that uh, these particular guys are blocking for me because they're the better blockers. And I definitely don't want to do it over there because that linebacker is really ruthless. And so, but by the time he does all that shit, what happened? He got smashed. What would a good athlete do? He grabbed that ball. As soon as he sees, what, what did uh, Walter Payton say? I know I'm dating myself now. Walter Payton was a, was a great running back back in the 80s. He says, all I need, or I think it was Walter Payton, 18 inches of daylight. That's what he said. He said, as soon as that ball is put in my hand, boom, I'm looking for 18 inches of daylight. Basically, he's just looking for a gap. Doesn't matter. 18 inches. That's all it is. That's his, that, that was his standard by which he's going to take action. Boom, 18 inches. Bow, there it is. Just a little bit more than a foot. It's the same thing with us, right? When the ball has been passed to us, the ball, you got the ball in your hands. You got to now, as quickly as you can, look for those 18 inches of daylight and run, brother. You got to run. You got to go. But if you stop and you think and you decide whether or not am I capable, can I do this? Is this right? What if there's another opportunity? You get in your, you get in your way. You get in your way. So that's it, man. I want you to observe how you get in your way, notice it, isolate it, and destroy it. Stop it. Stop. But you can't stop something if you don't know it. And so you got to look, observe, isolate, and then stop, and then quit. And I think you'll be okay if you do that, bro. Don't make it more complicated than it is. Do, uh, Nikita gives good advice. He says, it's better to do something badly than to not do it at all. Exactly. I believe that in many instances, right? There's no hard and fast rule. But the whole idea is stop getting in your way and just take action. You got to take action. You know what action breeds? Momentum. And you know what momentum breeds? Success. So you just got to go for it, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.